So I actually recorded this uh, months back in the spring, uh, so I was referencing it being pollen season during the video. Uh, but anyway, so now life got busy and, and I didn't get a chance to actually post them. So now that uh, I'm stuck in the hotel for the next couple of months for more Army training, uh, I got time to kind of put this video together and put it out there, kind of an update on the different vehicles and projects we've got going on. Um, and I'll be doing a video, kind of like a breakdown video of all the different parts I use to supercharge the HHR because I know that's a video request I get quite often but also I'm going to kind of do it with a little bit of a twist and show how you can actually do it how I was able to do it for free and make money while doing it by parting out a cobalt. I'm going to do that whole like price breakdown of everything but uh, for now let's get to the video. I realize I haven't done any sort of update on any of my vehicles in a long time and actually haven't even posted on one one car that I actually had and got rid of. I got a Ford Flex and then I got this Chevy Sonic Turbo um, and a few others. So I'm going to kind of go around, show what we've got going on, different vehicles and progress on it. And I'm going to do a HHR update video here pretty soon because we're doing quite a bit of work on it. It's in the shop right now. So let's get to it. Here's my little Chevy Sonic Turbo that I haven't really done any videos on. I uh, actually did some shorts on it. Did custom two and a half inch uh, exhaust with a little Gibson muffler. It is, of course, like I said, turbo. And it is a uh, six-speed manual. And uh, actually probably going to sell this. I got it because I thought it was going to get a little bit better mileage than it does. I mean, average like 32 with my type of driving. But I'd rather just sell it and keep the HHR for that kind of mileage. There's the old 1970 AM General uh, M35A2. Did the video on doing the uh, super singles on, not really super singles, but just putting the 47s on the original split ring wheels. And uh, it's running good. I drive it about once or twice a week to work. It needs to be cleaned. Slowly upgrading, upgraded the headlights to LEDs along with the taillights. Still trying to get some front marker lights to upgrade them because neither of those work and I'm pretty sure they're original 1970s so next is my 2009 2500 HD I think I did a video a short on doing the exhaust it's uh, so I've done the, done the front front end paint matched uh, lowered it almost eight inches I think it's uh, on two inch drop spindles half ton keys backed all the way out and in the rear it's got a DJM uh, I think a six inch spring hanger drop with the drop shackles and running half ton leaf springs so half ton leaf springs gave it like four inches by itself It's long tube headers, custom exhaust. Other than that, it's it's pretty stock and being lowered. Sounds good, runs good. I'm going to start doing more videos on it. I actually got a few short clips of it running at the drag strip, a uh, thousand foot. I think it ran 11 something. I know it trapped at 90 miles an hour in a thousand foot, so that's not bad. I might drop a clip like the, of that in here. Saab is sitting here all poor and dusty but uh, we're gonna get back to it pretty soon I've got the heads off of it as you can see the engine's actually gonna come out because I'm doing a oil pump and oil pan gasket along with a stall converter because it's getting a 600 lift cam and I've already got the pac 1218 uh, springs installed on the heads over here which you can't see but that's all the parts gonna go back on it so We'll get to it eventually. And I bought everything to do a remote mount 78, 75 millimeter turbo on the Saab, but mainly because there's not a whole lot of room underneath. I know, underneath it. I know a lot of people have, but I want to keep air conditioning and all the creature comforts in place. So I was going to do the long tubes, 
and put the turbo remote mounted basically right where the Y pipe is. But I think this one's going to stay in a, and the 2500 HD is going to get uh, the turbo. And that is because the 2500 HD already has a 6L90 and the 14 bolt rear. It's already has the parts to hold up to that kind of power. This, on the other hand, it's got a stock 4L65, um, the 8.625 GM 10 bolt rear, which is pretty strong. But the 4L65 definitely won't last. And to do 4L80 conversion and keep it all-wheel drive is kind of a pain. I know LT, Lawrence Tolman, has done or is going to be doing a video on his showing how to adapt the 27 spline, maybe wrong, to the 32 spline output of the 4L80 to be able to use a factory transfer case, uh, either you know this one or the NV149 that came out of the Denali's and SS trucks. So that's the main reason I think this one's just going to stay in a, just have fun, make it sound good, make it run good, nice daily. But I don't think I want to go through all that when the other truck is already basically built to handle that level of power. So on this guy, it's HHR. So I'm doing a few things to it and I'm going to do a video breakdown, breaking down all of the parts because I've had a couple of requests of a video going specifically over the parts I used to supercharge it. But this go round, I am pulling the coils out, coilovers off because it rides like crap. I can't, I can't stand it. Going back to either the two inch drop springs from ZZP or just the factory FE3 springs, not 100% sure on that. And, and I actually stopped driving it because, surprise, the 217,000 mile original clutch finally started slipping in third and fourth gear under a load. And so it's getting an upgraded clutch. And then actually I'm swapping out the 413 final drive ratio transmission out for the XFE Cobalt 363 final drive. This thing screams going down the highway at like 3,500 RPMs. And first gear is useless with a supercharger. So with the added horsepower and torque, I really don't need the lower geared transaxle that they put in these to compensate for the extra weight versus the cobalts. Then either at the same time, or I may wait to do it because I want to drive it. <laughs> it's been a while since I've driven it. Going to be going down to the 2.6 pulley um, and the manual tensioner from ZZP. Uh, the 2.6 pulley requires you to machine the snout of the uh, supercharger, which I have the ZZP's kit for that as well. Also upgrading to these billet injector isolators because why not? They're like 20 bucks, the same as replacing them with OEM plastic ones. So I'm going to up the power a little bit. And when I do that, I'm going uh, going up to 80 pound injectors and E85 and retuning it. So that's why I might hold off on the performance mods right now. Because that's another like 600 bucks in, in parts I'd have to buy. So we'll see. So after running these coilovers about a year, uh, I'm taking them off. They ride like crap. So um, other people might have different definitions of riding like crap. But here in Arkansas, the roads are really bad. The suspension is super stiff and bouncy. And I like to drive hard on some curvy roads. And it actually handled worse than on factory springs. And definitely way worse than on the drop springs I had. Um, and to solve the problem with the shocks in the back, uh, I, I ran my KYBs that I had. They were just longer. The overall compressed length was the same as the drop shock. I got these 13-inch limiting straps off of Summit Racing for like 25 bucks. Uh, I called the company, and they wanted like $300 for a pair of shocks for this thing, which is ridiculous. Especially when KYBs are far better shock, only like 30 bucks, and I already had them. So $20, $25 pair of limiting straps fix that what that does is so every time i jack it up uh, the whole spring assembly doesn't fall out the back because that's a pain in the butt trying to lower the vehicle down and keep the springs in place and everything so that eliminates that problem okay so i had the supercharger off to do this 2.6 inch pulley um, and i saw there wasn't any videos on actually machining the snout down so 
this is a little tool that you can get from ZZP and you take your pulley off and thread it on just bolt it on and what it does is it, it'll machine the snout back about it looks about like a eighth of an inch or so maybe a quarter just enough to fit the, the smaller diameter pulley on there and so you bolt it on and what I've got is I've got my 13 millimeter chucked up in my drill so I can go real slow with it and as you turn it you can see it peeling off the chunks of aluminum and then once you've done it enough where you're not seeing any of the chunks coming off you just by hand basically turn this little guy turn the tension up on that and then that's basically it So the HHR is actually on the lift, so when I get back, uh, that's the first thing I'm going to finish. So I've got, like I showed in the video, I've started milling uh, the snout of the supercharger down. It's going to go back together. And I mentioned in the video that I was probably going to go 60, not 60, I have 60 pound injectors. I was going to go 80 pound injectors and run E85. I just don't think that's going to be a good option because with the operating system that my ECU runs on, I either have to, or I have to run an E85 file or a 93 file uh, tune. So if I can't find the 85, I've got to keep my HP tuner computer with me and upload it, upload a non-ethanol tune. And also, as we know, E85, it can be anywhere between 50 and 85% ethanol. So that's a pretty big swing unless you're testing the, the ethanol content at every time you fill up. So what I actually think I'm gonna do is do water meth injection um, right after the throttle body. So that'll help keep AITs down uh, a lot, which is the big, and been, been the biggest issue that I've had with this setup is just really high intake temperatures. Um, that ZZP stage three heat exchanger doesn't seem to be doing that great of a job. So, um, and by what I mean, having to run two separate tune files for E85 and 93 is that my operating system that that ECU runs does not support ethanol content sensor like a lot of a lot of different platforms run like the Chevy Sonic that I show in this video that um, if I had kept does support a ethanol content sensor along with my Saab the 2500 HD those operating systems support uh, ethanol content sensors whereas the HHR doesn't because the HHR Cobalt G5 platforms that did offer E85 did a what they call consider a virtual flex fuel system where they basically just heavily monitored um, the primary O2 sensors which if I'm not mistaken were actually wideband O2 sensors and the computer made corrections off of that so there's no ability to run ethanol content sensors so just running E85 just doesn't seem to be that a very viable option for the HA. But yeah, so that's the first thing uh, on the list to do when I get back and hopefully by, because I won't be back until late September, so hopefully, you know, October, November, I think I'll be ripping around, making some good passes in the cold weather and finally make it back to the dyno and finally make it back to the drag strip with it. So we'll see.